This is Gemar Nadari Medaf Peiches. All the learning for this month as we wind down this month of Tevis has been generously sponsored by a close friend of the Daf as the Schos Ilin Hashem of Aryeleb ben Yaakov v'Siyat Dishmaya. The learning the entire Chabura should bring Aryeleb ben Yaakov to a higher in place in Gan Eden Shel as well. We like to dedicate the learning as a schutz for Shlema for Yena Michal ben Adina Sima. Just got a message. He's actually a member of the Chabura that learns together with us regularly. That unfortunately had a stroke over Shabbos, is in a coma, and therefore Besiyat de Shemaya, the incredible Schos HaTayra, should bring Yoyna Micha ben Adina Sima a complete Rufua Shalema. So we're holding on the bottom of Peizayin Amid Beis again. Apologies for the lateness of this year, Psiat de Shemaya. Tomorrow's shear, which is Sunday's shear, should be up as well. And we should be back on track, finishing the Mesechta right around the corner. So, Pesayin Medbez says the Mishnah, hopefully, this Mishnah seems a little bit familiar as we read it, as we've seen this Mishnah quoted previously. Says the Mishnah, Yoideya Ani Shiyesh Nedarim. If a husband says, I know that there's a concept of nidarim. Aval, however, any idea him. I didn't know that I'm able to be me for the neder. So is that called that he heard a neder and he has the power to be me for the neder? Again, the question basically being, what is called, and we're going to elaborate on this in one moment as we read further in the Mishnah, what is called Yoim Shamay? We know that one could only be made for a neder on Yoim Shamay, on the day that he hears the neder. So the question is, as we're going to elaborate again on in one second, what is called Yoim Shamay? Obviously, in general terms, Yoim Shamay is the day that you hear about a neder. But let's go a dot, drop deeper in figuring out what exactly Yoim Shamay means. So again, so it knows that there's a concept of Nidarim. But he doesn't know he can be made for the Nidar. What is the Alocha Yafer? When he finds out that he can be made for his wife's Nidar, he is able to do such. Continues the Mishnah, Continues the Mishnah, that if someone says he knows that you're able to be made for a Nidar, but he does not know that what? He doesn't know it's a neder. He knows you can be made for a neder. He hears his wife saying something. Maybe she said some sort of neder. We've seen sometimes that it's not always so clear it's a neder. And whatnot. He doesn't know it's a neder. Says the Mishnah, what is the status now? Rabbi Meir, Oimer, lo yafer. Says Rabbi Meir, it's too late. You knew about me. If you're in, so that's called Yoim Shamay. It's called knowing, hearing about a neder. The fact that you didn't know this was a neder, when you find out about it on the next day, it's too late. Chachamim, Oimrim, yafer. And the basic way of explaining this Mishnah is, what is called Yoim Shamay? What is called knowing about a neder? In case number one of the Mishnah, that you knew about Nedarim, you just didn't know that you could be made for Nedar, so everyone's going to agree that's not called the day of hearing about the Nedar. I, you heard about it, but you didn't know all the implications of what it meant to hear about it. So when you find out, you can be made for. Case B in the Mishnah, which we have a debate, Rami and the Chacham, which is really going to be the focus of the bulk of today's daf. When you knew you could be made for, you just didn't know this is a neder. Then Rameir says, I'm sorry, you knew everything. Therefore, the Yom Shammai, the day of the neder, kicks in. And therefore, when you find out later about the neder, it's too late and the Chachamim say, no. Now, let's go one step deeper even. Comes along the Gemara. We're going to read the question of the Gemara. It's going to sound like Chinese. And then Besiyat de Shemaya will explain, hopefully with clarity. Ask the Gemara dot bottom of Pezayin Amid Beis. Beloi Reois says the Gemara, quoting a halacha Meseches Makois with regard to one who kills Bishayik. Someone is chopping wood in the forest, the axe head shoots off, kills someone, Rahman al Itzlan. What is the halacha? You kill someone Bishayik, you go to Galus. But says the Pasik, when it refers to Gallus, says the Pasik, Bilai Ra'is. You go to Gallus without 
seeing that if you killed someone b'shoigeg, then you go to Galus. So we have a machlaik is what does b'loi ra'ais mean? Comes along the first opinion, Rabbi Yehuda. Prat l'suma divrei Rabbi Yehuda. It comes to exclude a suma. It says you kill someone without seeing. Says Rabbi Yehuda, a Suma is not able to see, so a Suma is excluded, and a Suma will not go to Galus, will not go to Ari Miklot. Rabbi Yehuda, Aymer, Le Rabbis, Es Asuma. Says Rabbi, excuse me, Meir Aymer, the Rabbis, Es Asuma. Why? How could that include a Suma? It says you can't see. So the way that the Ran explains, and this is how it's going to come full circle and be a question in our Mishnah, what is called, what level of knowledge, what level of seeing is necessary? So Rameer learns that when the Torah says, ra'is, it means not without seeing literally, it means without the knowledge of the person being there. And when the Torah uses a word, how inclusive is that word? So Rameer says, when the Torah says, ra'is, it's talking about someone who doesn't have the knowledge that the person is there. So says the Rameyer, that's Lerabois. That includes a blind person. How could that include a blind person? Because a blind person could, yes, have the knowledge of someone being there. And therefore, he had the knowledge the person was there, and he killed him inadvertently, so he goes to Gullus. So again, what's the question from our Mishnah? Rameir in our Mishnah said, when you know you could be made for a neder, you don't know this is a neder. Is that called biyoyim shamai? Said Rameir, yes. So Rameir is clearly learning that when the Torah writes a word, biyoyim shamai, the day of hearing a neder, it's all inclusive. It's a hundred percent. And therefore, even though you didn't know that this is a neder, Tough luck, but it's still called Yom Shammai, and therefore you do not have the ability to meet for the Neder the next day. Yet, Rameir is of the opinion that when the Torah says, B'loi Ra'ais, it's not all-inclusive. That is the stira, that is the contradiction. When the Torah says a word, is it all-inclusive or not? If it is all-inclusive, then it should include all scenarios. And the problem is, that we're seeing within Rameyer that in one scenario it's yes all-inclusive, in another scenario it is not all-inclusive. Let's speak it out one last time. In the Mishnah it's all-inclusive. In the Mishnah it's coming to say, in the Mishnah it's coming to say, excuse me, that when it says Yoim Shamai, Lo Yafer includes everything. The fact you don't have it, it's too late. Whereas in the Braisa, it says B'loi Ra'is, and it means a minimized form. That is the stira, that is the contradiction within the opinion of Rebbe Meir. And with that, and in case anyone felt that was a little bit complicated, no one should be nervous, as the rest of the daf b'siyat de Shemayim should flow very, very simply. We turn over to, oh, excuse me, just trying to get the page up for everyone. There we go. We turn over to, one more time. We turn over to Peiches Amir Aleph, answers the Gemara, Amar Rava, Hacham Inyana Dikra, Vehacham Inyana Dikra. Says Rava, what are we comparing? Says Rava, this is a case of apples and oranges. You can't compare Are Miklat with the din of Nidarim. Says Rava, each one goes within the context of the apostling. Now, whether we have this gears or not, the Ran says no, others say yes, but continues to explain the Gemara, what exactly does that mean, that it's the context of the Pasik? Rabbi Yehuda Savar, Gabi Reit Seach, what does it say by Ari Miklot? Asha Yavo Yisrael, Obiar, you come into the forest, Kal Davar, Meyayol Liyar, Vesuma Nami, Bar Meyayol Liyar, who says Rabbi Yehuda, anyone can come into the forest, including a Suma, including a blind person, V'i Amrit, and says Rabbi Yehuda, and if you're going to tell me, B'loi Rois, the Rabbis says Suma, and if you're going to tell me, wait, anyone can come into a forest, even a Suma, but one second, it says B'loi Rois, 
you can't see that's going to come to include a suma. Miyayer nafkale. We already learned it out from the forest, because a suma can walk into a forest. So the Pasik says a blind man can walk into a forest. Pasik says, Belay Ra'is to include a blind man. Elishma mina Belay Ra'is, Parat suma. So therefore comes the Rabbi Yehuda and says, since we have two different sukkim being marbe, this, uh, excuse me, um, since we have, let's explain this correctly, since the fact that the Apostlech already said to include a blind person, when it says prat, when, excuse me, since it says biyar, one more time, to include a blind person, when the Apostlech says it must come to exclude the blind person. Let's see Rameir, and hopefully we'll have better clarity. Rameir savar ksiv bibli das. Says Rameir, he owns it on a different word. The Torah says, Bibli das, without awareness. Kol davar, miyade, which means any person who has the awareness. That's where Rameir learned that a blind person maybe can't see, but he has the awareness of someone being there. But Vesuma lav bar meyadu. But Vesuma does not have such awareness. Now, what exactly does that mean? So explains the Ran, and this is where the, it gets a little bit sticky. Says the Ran, yeah, Suma could have an awareness. But can he have a precise awareness? Of course not, he's blind. So the fact he doesn't have a precise awareness, the fact he doesn't have a precise awareness says, Rameir, the blind person, is excluded. And then you're going to tell me, the Torah says, you can't see. That also comes to exclude a Suma. Already was excluded from Lidas. How does that happen? So this is what we were explaining before. In Rameir, we have two psukim that are excluding the Suma. So I have two psukim excluding the Suma. Therefore, says Rameir, it comes to be Marbe the Suma. How could that be? This goes that ain that any time we have two times that the Torah is being mimayit something, any a double miot comes to include. Let's just scroll down for a moment to the Ran. The Ran on the fourth white line explains the concept I just said. Suma lav bar medu, That's the first thing we just spoke out, that a blind person can't know with precision where his friend is. Mamish. V'yamir b'loi ra'is brought the suma. V'yamir b'loi ra'is also comes to exclude. M'abliyad asnaf k'lai. Ready? Know that hilka chavle miot achar miot. It's an exclusion after an exclusion, a double exclusion. And ironically, perhaps this is one of the yig gimel midday satayr and the jeshes v'ham ve'einoi ella l'rabois. Any time we have a double miot, the Torah is really coming to include. And the Ram points out. Stay tuned. Misachas makis. We're going to learn this. More in depth. So this answers the Gemara. We have a machlek as Rameir and Rabbi Yehuda. We asked that Rameir was a stira to our Mishnah. Because when a Torah writes a word, is the word all inclusive or not? And we had a stira between the way Rabbi Meir learned to Yoim Shamai, that if you know about the concept of being able to be made for a nether, but you don't know this is a nether, says Rabbi Meir, that's enough. I, you don't have 100% knowledge, 50% knowledge is enough. Yet, when it comes to B'lai Ra'is, Rameer learned not that way. Rameer learned seemingly that you need to have 100% knowledge. So the Gemara had a contradiction within Rameer. Answers the Gemara not, that within Makis, within Galos, it's an isolated Machlekes, Rameer and Rabbi Yudah, Gzir, How do we learn? Vashayava Yisrael Bayar, Mibli Das, B'lai Ra'is. Rav Yehuda said, two of them are coming to be marba, and therefore, excuse me, two of them are coming to be, let's say this correctly, I keep getting confused, I'm sorry, that a Shayavai is coming to be, that a blind person, Kiryas, come into Faris, and if you're going to tell me, Blay Ra'is comes to include, we already know that, and therefore it comes to exclude, whereas Rameir says, no, we have two times exclusions, which comes to include, so it's an isolated machlaikas, as as within the rules of Golos. We continue with another Mishnah, Pechas and Aleph, says the Mishnah, similar to Kalbu Savu and Rav Akiva, as we've seen, so makes a Nedra from his son-in-law. Someone says, I do not want 
my son-in-law to have any benefit from me. But, <laughs> he doesn't want his son-in-law to have any benefit, but he still likes his daughter. The who writes Allah says, he wants to give his daughter money. So what's the problem? Give her cash. The problem is, anything that a woman has, her husband has. To be more particularly in Nechzei Maluk, the woman has the Karen, as we've learned, but the husband gets the pay rise. So if he gives his wife, daughter something, by default, the husband, his son-in-law, will be getting something. So how could he give something to his daughter without his, her husband getting? If he has a nether, he's not allowed to give benefit to the son-in-law. Aymer Allah, he says to her, This money is given to you as a present. Do build that! Caveat. Your husband has no rishos in them. Your husband, they cannot have a benefit from it. Rather, I'm giving you cash, go buy yourself supper, and it's only for your meal. Now, why he had to say it in this wording, he couldn't say this is just for your mezayinus, we'll leave it at that. But that would be a way he could circumvent his nadar, even though there is a nadar that the, the father-in-law cannot give his son-in-law benefit. So by giving his daughter, he's by default giving the son-in-law explains the Mishnah, you could give it to the daughter with a tenai, with a caveat, it's for you, not your husband, go buy yourself dinner. Amar Rav. So says the Gemara, says Rav Leishanu, Ela, Dharma Lamash, Atan, I said it, and I said it, it's That last line, says Rav, is critical, that it only works if he speaks out, that it has to be specifically for the food to put in your mouth. But if he says, but if, she, but if he says to his daughter, do you want with it? You don't necessarily have to go buy dinner. Whatever you like, you could do with it. Then the halacha is, the husband has an acquisition in it, and that violates the nether. Opinion of Rav Shmuel Amar. Even if he says to her, do what you want, look at son Baal, the husband does not acquire. So Machlech is Rav and Shmuel, how precise the Mishnah was. That when the Mishnah said, take this cash, go buy dinner, was it only that case? Or no, he could tell her, give her the money, and say to her, do what you want, and still it will be specifically for her. So Mask, if La Rav Zeira, asks Rav Zeira, as we turn over to Peches Amir Aleph, Keman Azla Shmaitza de Rav. This din of Rav that we just quoted, who is Rav going like, asks Rav Zira, and explains Rav Zira, you know who Rav is going like? Kirabi Meir. Rav is going like the opinion of Rav Meir. Who is this Rav Meir that we speak of? So explains the Gemara, Rav is going like Rav Meir that what? Tamar Yad Isha Ki Yad Like we just explained, Rav Meir is of the opinion that when a woman gets something, whoop, excuse me, one more second, I'm sorry, you just lost your page, that when a woman gets something, her husband acquires it as well. Veraminu, now that we establish that Rav is going with Rameir, asks Rav Zeyra's contradiction. As Rav Zeyra, we have a Mishnah that we're going to get to soon in Gein, it's also an Erechim. Ketzan Mishtatvim Bimavoi. And we already had it, excuse me, we already had it in Erevin. Ketzan Mishtatvin Bimavoi. How do you make a sheet of in a Mavoi, a bunch of houses, if you remember, open up into essential Mavoi? How do you make a sheet of, how do you make a partnership that these private people could carry within the Mavoi? Menechas Achavis, you put down your barrel of Aimer and you say, Arez El Chobane Mavoi. This barrel of wine is for all the people in the Mavoi, you mezakin lahen, and you give it to them, they all have a right. And ownership in this wine. You're allowed to give over the acquisition, the ownership, to all the people of the Bavoy, either via whom his servant, his elderly children, or even his wife. And that's where the question comes in, ask the Gemara six lines down. If you're going to say that whatever a woman gets, automatically her husband gets. So when I go and I put down this barrel of wine and I tell my wife, acquire this on behalf of everyone in the Mavoy, I basically just said, go take it and put it back in my pocket. Because whatever she gets, I get. So how does this work? So my Rava 
answers Rava in defense of Rav. Normally, you're right. Whatever a husband gets, Yadisha, whatever a woman gets, her husband gets. With regard to sheet of Mivuais, we admit the Kivan de Lizchais la Achirimu, Miarbal Zachyo. That since the whole invention, the whole Kavana, the whole purpose is to transfer the ownership, in that scenario, the woman could do it. Continues the Gemara, another Kashi, Zira, Avinu, Ravashi. These cases, when it comes to sheet of voice, you're able to give over the ownership through the children who are Gedalim or through the Evid or the Shifcha who are Jewish. And these cases, and these people, you can't use small children. So we see clearly in this price that a wife cannot be the one to transfer ownership. Seemingly, why? Because when she gets, it goes back to the husband. But you, Rav, just said, when it comes to Shittuf, it's not a problem. Elam Rav Ashi, Mas Nisa Bishish Lachatzer, Ba'aisai Mavo, in Erevin, Teretz, Askinon, Tepiku Zachlan Avshei, Zaki Lachrini. Answers the Gemara, you know why? By Shittuf and Ba'ais, it's going to work that the woman could acquire on behalf of everyone else, even though normally, Yad Ishak Yad Baila, because in that case, the woman had her own little private house in that Mavoy. So, since she could have a Bailos for her house, she could acquire it everywhere else. But normally, Rav sticks to his guns. Yad Ishak Yad Baila. Machlik is Rav and Shmuel. How are we going to explain the din in our Mishnah? We'll pick it up for the next Mishnah, the next year. Bisiyato Dishmayo.